Perhaps the most important scene in the entire Three Body Problem series is also one of the most misunderstood. Since the TV adaptation differs from the book in several ways, we will focus exclusively on the meaning as conveyed in the show. Initially, the Trisolarans revered Yeah due to her position as the first human to make contact with them and her role as the spiritual leader of the ETO, an organization on Earth dedicated to promoting Trisolaran interests. However, this changed when the Trisolarans discovered that humans do not communicate through thought. A liar is someone whose words are false. A liar cannot be trusted. We cannot coexist with liars. The Trisolarans turned their backs on her and many others within the ETO, leaving Yi shocked and disillusioned by this sudden betrayal. This is why in her final hours, despite having dedicated her entire life to aiding the Trisolarans' invasion, Ye decides to give humanity a chance to resist. Feeling betrayed, she delivers a quiet but deliberate act of defiance by issuing a threat to the Trisolarans. I'm an old woman whose old beliefs have led us down this terrible path. But I still have an idea or two left in me. And centuries from now, there may well be a fair fight. Or no fight at all. With this statement, Yi knowingly forced the Trisolarans to monitor her every move just before meeting with Saul Durand. She also knows the UN had infiltrated the ETO and will protect anyone marked for assassination by the organization. Her goal here is to make the Trisolarans fear Saul enough to repeatedly order his assassination, thus guaranteeing him full protection of the UN. Upon meeting Duran, Ye is aware that Sophons are present. She can't tell Saul directly how to stop the Trisolarans, so she uses a metaphor in the form of a joke. So Einstein dies. He finds himself in heaven and he has his violin. He's overjoyed. He loves his violin more than physics, even more than women. He's excited to find out how well he can play in heaven. He imagines he'll be pretty damn good. So he starts tuning up and the angels rush at him. What are you doing? They say, I'm getting ready to play. Don't do that. God won't like it. He's a saxophonist, so Einstein stops. He doesn't play, but it's difficult. He loves music, and there's actually not much to do in heaven. And sure enough, from high above, he hears a saxophone. It's playing Take the A Train. Do you know that one? Yeah, I heard it. Einstein knows it too, and he thinks, I'm going to do it. I'm going to play with him. We're going to sound great together. So he starts playing Take the A-Train. The saxophone stops and God appears. He marches over to Einstein and kicks him in the balls, which hurts even in heaven. Then he smashes Einstein's beloved violin to bits. Eternity without music. Heaven has become hell for Einstein. And as he writhes on the ground, holding his smashed balls, an angel comes over and says, we warned you, never play with God. Out of context, the joke might seem like an odd attempt at humor. However, it contains multiple layers of meaning. On the surface, it serves as a metaphor for Ye Wenji's past actions. Like Einstein, who entered heaven with his violin and ignored the angel's warnings by attempting to play music with God, she tried to play ally with the Trisolaran leadership, despite warnings from the first Trisolaran listener who cautioned her against establishing contact. Just as God destroys Einstein's violin, the Trisolaran leadership destroyed everything Ye loved, her movement, her purpose, and her daughter. On a deeper level, however, the joke functions as an allegory for the dark forest theory. Don't draw attention to yourself or God will arrive. In this context, that God represents a type three civilization, which according to the theory would instinctively annihilate a lower civilization like us or the Trisolarans. But the most significant part of this scene is not the joke itself, it's what Ye says next. When Saul reacts with apparent confusion, Ye asks, You don't like it? No, it's, it's not that, it's just, 
never play with God. She knows he doesn't understand the joke, and she is fully aware that the Sophons are listening. The tone of the conversation shifts, becoming more serious and sinister as Yeah continues. Humor is a very personal thing. Some people understand it and some people don't. Some jokes are so private, they only make sense to two people. This line serves two purposes. First, it signals to the Trisolarans that Yeah is sharing something with Saul that is beyond their understanding. Second, it conveys to Saul a vital revelation. The key to resisting the Trisolarans and their omnipresent surveillance lies in exploiting what they cannot comprehend. The jokes are important. We wouldn't survive without them. Yeah, explicitly frames deception as humanity's path to survival. She uses the metaphor of the joke to illustrate how coded, context-dependent communication can elude the Trisolarans and how it could be weaponized in the coming conflict. Essentially, she is telling Saul, what I've just told you is a clue for how we can survive. He also anticipates the consequences of her actions. She knows the Trisolarans will try to assassinate Saul because although they cannot understand the conversation, they'll recognize its importance. She acknowledges this risk with the line, Take care, Saul. I hope my joke doesn't cause you any trouble. She deliberately puts him in danger and by doing so ensures the UN will protect him and eventually nominate him for the Wall Facer project. She believes Saul has the best chance of figuring out how to stop the Trisolarans. With a seemingly insignificant joke, she plants the seed in Saul's mind for a strategy that operates entirely outside the Trisolaran's field of view. By ensuring that the wallfacer position goes to one of the smartest physicists, he may eventually uncover the deeper meaning behind her words and leverage it to devise a plan to stop the invasion. 